الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله glad tidings to you and I for we are in this blessed month of Sha'ban المعظم a month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exalted and chosen above other months alhamdulillah. The literal meaning of Sha'ban can be traced back to the root word of Sha'ban which means branch. So Sha'ban literally means something that branches off. And the ulama they say what does this mean that branching off? What is the meaning of this? Is that it is a bridge between blessed months of Rajab and the blessed month of Ramadan. So it is a branch. It is branching, it is connecting the month of Rajab to the month of Ramadan. And in itself Sha'ban is a great month as the Prophet would fast abundantly in this month. And when the Prophet would increase in his ibadat, this is a sign for the Ummah that he, this is, he is honoring that thing. Right? Because when the Prophet the best of creation, is fasting in excess in a certain month or in a certain day or he's doing certain ibadat on a specific day or night. This is showing us that he is honoring that month or that day or that night by his blessed actions وسلم, and likewise we should honor and venerate those nights, those days or those months. So Sayyidina Aisha عنها, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, he said, I did not see the Prophet ﷺ fast so much besides the month of Ramadan than in the month of Sha'ban. SubhanAllah. And it would feel like the Prophet ﷺ would fast the whole month of Ramadan. That's how much he would fast in the month of Sha'ban. One of the wisdoms is that we prepare for the month of Ramadan this way. The Prophet ﷺ is showing us this. What else happened in the month of Sha'ban? As we know, the Prophet ﷺ said, Rajab is the month of Allah, Sha'ban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my Ummah. The ulama and the Mufassireen and the people who explain the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, those blessed beings who are the ulama and the righteous scholars, they say that why is the Prophet وسلم, or they ask the question or they reflect, why is he attributing Sha'ban to himself, وسلم, calling it his month? Because the, the, the verse of Salawat, Inna Allah wa Malaikatahu yusalluna al nabi يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم بارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه This blessed verse which is so dear to our hearts and dear to the hearts of the lovers of the Prophet ﷺ was revealed in this month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared and He actually revealed the secret one of the greatest secrets where He said indeed Allah continuously and this Allah not at one point or at one time, but continuously Allah and His angels are blessing the Prophet ﷺ, even now. And it's continuing to happen. It's a continuous. Yusallun is continuous form. It is fi'l, it is a verb, which is mudarik, which is continuous. It is not madhi. Sallu is madhi. Salla is madhi. Yusallun is present tense and it is continuous tense in Arabic. Yusallun ala nabi. There are Allah and His angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels malaika are constantly sending salawat and blessing the Prophet sallallahu Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima O believers, all those who believe, who people have, who, those people who have faith, Allah is addressing us and commanding us that we have to bless the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask Allah, invoke blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and salute him and greet him with a worthy salutation. This is fard upon us. To invoke Allah's blessings and peace upon Rasulullah is an obligation by this verse. And if we do not do this, we are if we do not do this, we are negating an obligation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is haram. So we have to send and ask Allah, we have to invoke Allah's blessings and peace upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by doing this, we are connecting ourselves to Allah and His beloved Prophet. And we are engaging in an action which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself He has taken upon himself to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say in the Qur'an anywhere he performs salah or he does zakah or he does any action or any ibadah or he is not in need of any of that and he is not in need of anything Jalla Jalal subhanahu wa ta'ala but he has taken it upon himself to send blessings upon his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he has given us those believers a chance to partake in this action with him subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way which befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala 
So when we do this, we are automatically connected to Allah and His Prophet Subhanallah. As the Prophet said, من صلى عليه صلاة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة That a person who invokes one blessing upon me, one durood, one salat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses that person ten times. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. One blessing of Allah. How many blessings of Allah do you need? If you look at the scale on the Day of Judgment, on the Mizan, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts one blessing in our scale, in the good deeds, Alhamdulillah. it's more than enough. Allah. 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 We, don't, we do not need anything else. But what is Allah saying? Ten blessings upon you. By saying one time, even sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're automatically receiving ten blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another narration, you are ten sins are erased from your account. Subhanallah. And you are raised ten levels, darajat. Subhanallah. By one blessing upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the poet and the, the writer and the shaykh, he says in his qasida, Adim is salata ala nabi Muhammadi. That continue and perpetually invoke Allah's blessings upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَأَعْمَالُنَا بَيْنَ الْقَبُولِ وَرَدِّهَا For our actions or other actions are between rejection and acceptance إِلَّا الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ مُحَمَّدِ Accept the blessing upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Our other actions we do not know if they're qabool or not They're, they're hanging in between They're between uh, acceptance and rejection Only Allah knows if they're accepted But we do know from the verses of the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah, that the blessing upon Rasulullah is accepted. Subhanallah. <laughs> so constantly invoke Allah's blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or other actions are between uh, acceptance and rejection. Accept illa salata ala nabi Muhammad. Accept the blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this verse was revealed in the month of Sha'ban. Many other important Events in the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam occurred in the month of Sha'ban. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this great miracle to Rasulullah to show the kuffar who were denying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they asked him, can you split the moon? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his shahada, he split the moon. Nare takbir! Nare Even the moon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting the moon in the control of the finger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he, ca he caused the moon to split at the blessed ishara and the indication of the blessed shahada finger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The moon was split into this happened in Sha'ban. Subhanallah. <laughs> what else happened in Sha'ban? The Qibla was changed from Jerusalem to Bayt al Maqdis to Kaabat al Sharifa in Makkah al Mukarram. Subhanallah. And in the verse of the Quran, Subhanallah, people who love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you reflect on the verse of the Qur'an which is talking about the change of the Qibla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically saying that, Ya oh my beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I know that you want the Qibla to be Makkah al-Mukarram. Subhanallah. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا So then turn your blessed face to the Qibla that is pleasing to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is why saying the Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that, Ya Rasulullah, O beloved messenger, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hastening to please you. Subhanallah, Allah the creator is hastening to please you. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, which is a longer verse, and the mafhum is that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the, 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 the wish of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to have the Qibla to be Makkah al-Mukarram and the Kaaba al-Sharifa. But still the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as ordered by Allah, he would pray and the Sahaba at the beginning of uh, the blessed life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would pray towards Bayt al-Maqdis. Right? But this, they were once praying in, in, in this place which is now known as Masjid Qiblatayn. If you go to Medina al-Munawwara and you visit and you do the ziyarat, there is a masjid called Masjid Qiblatayn. So this masjid was built in that place where the Prophet ﷺ was praying and the Sahaba were behind him and this event took place, it was in Salah. It was in the Salah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while facing Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now, O oh my beloved Prophet ﷺ, I know what's in your heart. I know what you Allah desire. Allah. And I am your, your Rabb and I am your beloved Creator and I want to Hasten towards what you desire. And I'm commanding you to now face your blessed face towards the Qibla 
that you are pleased with tardaha, that pleases you, which is Masjid al-Haram in Makkah al-Mukarramah. So in the Salah, the Prophet sallallahu made a 180 degree shift, the whole other direction towards Makkah al-Mukarramah. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, the Sahaba, this was a test for the Sahaba. Allah. Allahu Akbar. But we are weak people, but the Sahaba, they are on a different level with Allah. Now the test was, who is that? This is in Salah, they cannot talk. They cannot ask Rasulullah, why are you changing your face? Because they're in Salah. The test was, now who is going to follow the Prophet without asking a question? Ya Rasulullah. Which is true following. Without asking questions. These days we ask, why did the Muslim do Why did he do The true following of Rasulullah, the true ittiba, if he does something, you do it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khalas. You don't ask a question. He's your beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't have to ask why. You don't have to ask for dalail. If you see your beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing something, you do that. There were 10 Sahaba who right away they turned from the Jama'ah. There were more than 10 praying, but 10 of them right away when they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turn, they turned right away. The rest of them, afterwards they asked, inquired, why did this happen? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, and then from then on they would pray towards by the Masjid al-Haram in Makkah. Now the ulama, they explained, these ten, who were they? Actually, these ten were to become the Asharatul Mubashara. These ten were the ones who were given the glad tidings of paradise later on in Medina al munawwarah after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu We know of them, they are Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq, Sayyidina Uthman al Nubayn, Sayyidina Ali al-Mutada, the four Khulafa, Sayyidina Sa'id was Sa'id, was Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, was Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, was Sayyidina Tulha, was Sayyidina Zubayr radiallahu anhu. These were the ten who were given later on the glad tidings of paradise. But the ulama and the Mufassirin, the awliya, they say the reason they were given the glad tidings is because they followed Rasulullah right away. Because of that event in that place where it's now known as Masjid Qiblatayn, when the Qibla was changed, they, those were the ten who did not ask any questions. Their, their Iman was so strong is that they knew that what the Prophet ﷺ is doing is a command from Allah. And what they are doing is indeed, they're, when they're following Rasulullah, they're following the command of Allah. May you Rasul, faqad Allah. The person who obeys the Messenger is obeying Allah. They knew that and that's why their Iman caused them to turn right away following Rasulullah. And later on they were given the reward of that by being given glad tidings of paradise in this world. So you see my dear brothers and sisters, the love of the Prophet ﷺ and his ittiba it makes you a Jannati before you even go to Jannah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this also happened in the Sha in the month of Shaaban. My dear brothers and sisters, one more important night takes place in this month of Shaaban, and that is the Laylatul Nisr min Shaaban, which is the fifteenth night of Shaaban, which is a blessed night, also known as Laylatul Bara'a, also known as Shabbi Barat, which in, in the from the people of Hind and the indo pak subcontinent we know it as Shabbi Barat, the night of salvation. Laylatul Nisr min Sha'ban. This is a blessed night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this night in the Quran. Some Mufassirin they say this verse in Surah Al Dukhan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to Laylatul Mubarakah, this blessed night. Fiha yufraku kullu amnil hakim. In this night, every affair is decided. Those people who are to die in the coming year, they are decided in this night. The scrolls are given to the angels of the people who are going to die in the coming year. This is all decided in this later to Nisr bin Shaban, the 15th of Shaban. How much risk is a person going to get in the coming year? This is uh, decreed in that night, and so forth and so forth. Things, these affairs, fiha yufraku, kullu amnin hakim, as Allah says in the Quran. These affairs are decided in this month, uh, in this night, fi Laylatul Mubarakah, this blessed night. And this is a night where in which the dua is not rejected, this dua is accepted. Right? The Prophet wasallam said, these are. There are five nights in which the dua is not rejected. So we should strive to make dua. Subhanallah. Right? And the first night of Rajab, the 15th night of Sha'ban, the two nights before the Eidain, so the night before Eid al Fitr, the night before Eid al Adha, and every Thursday night. Every Eid al Jum'ah. These are the nights, the five nights in which the dua is not rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a night which there is a great outpouring of the mercy and blessings of, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon His creation. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that on this night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives more people than the hair on the sheep of the tribe of Bani Kalb. Mm. And the Bani Kalb were a tribe which had many sheep. And you can imagine when the Prophet 
counting the hair on his tribe, on the sheep of his tribe, you cannot even enumerate the number. So the meaning of, that the Prophet ﷺ is giving us is that this night is a night of maghfira. This night is a night of forgiveness. To spend this night, enliven this night. Inshallah, it will be fought. we're going to commemorate this night in this masjid, uh, inshallah, which is the 15th of Shaban. So today is the 10th, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it will be Tuesday night. Tuesday night will be the 15th night of Shaban. Wednesday would be the 15th day. So we're also recommended to fast on that day of, uh, of the 15th. So spend the night in the ibadah as much as we can. And inshallah, spend the day of 15th of Shaban in fasting. So inshallah, please come and join us with your friends and family. We will commemorate. And there are special prayers that we perform after Maghrib Salah. It is recommended to recite Yasin three times with special intentions. And also to perform Nawafil, a special Nawafil at that night. So inshallah, please join us. Inshallah, it will be a blessing. And the more gathering we have, the more people we have, the Jama'ah, inshallah, the more blessings inshallah will receive. But the ulama, they also mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gazes upon His servants in this night. Allah's gaze falls upon the servants in this night and He forgives everybody except two types of people, my dear brothers and sisters. Two types of people and these, these two types of people, we have to avoid having these qualities. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the people who are deprived of the blessings of this night, one of those qualities is they have rancor against their Muslims in their hearts. Allah. They have some ghir, they have some uh, shahna, in Arabic we say, they have some grudge against another Muslim. Those people who have grudges against their Muslim brothers and sisters, they have rancor, they have hatred towards their brother Muslim, their brothers and sisters in Islam, they are deprived of the blessings of the night. <coughs> because Allah's gaze falls upon the hearts. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look upon our physical beings. As in the hadith, Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, looks upon your hearts. He gazes upon the hearts. He does not gaze upon your physical beings. So when he looks at the hearts, when he gazes at the hearts, if he sees that you have hatred towards another Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ready to forgive you because that, that he's not going to forgive you until that other person forgives you. Allah. And this is just like on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, if you have if you've done something against another Muslim, or someone has hurt you or done something against you, taken away your right, then on the day of judgment there will be insaf, there will be justice, there will be adil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will manifest and that's the purpose of the day of judgment. So that everybody gets justice. Because these days people say we have a justice system, but how, 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 uh, subhanAllah, how true is that justice system? And we find out many cases people are taken into jail, into the prison system, and they've not done anything. And then you have people who have done so much things and they're, they're, they get away. So the reason for Yawm Al-Qiyamah is to establish the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only true one who can be just because he knows every single thing. So on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if people have grudges, He will judge those grudges and He will cause those judges, uh, grudges to be judged. And He will not forgive until that person forgives that person who has wronged them. So my dear brothers and sisters, there are sins between us and our Creator and we hope and we wish that Allah will forgive those sins. But when we wrong somebody else, when we wrong another creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we break somebody's heart, when we take somebody's right away, these sins are not forgiven easily. They're only forgiven once the person we have wronged forgives us. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to stay away from those so that we're not deprived of the blessings of these special nights like Laylatul Nisr al Shaban or Laylatul Qadr or the nights before the Eidain or the Thursday nights, right? That when we make dua, we want the dua to be accepted. So my dear brothers and sisters, if we have grudges, forgive. I know it's not easy sometimes. Sometimes it's a situation where you know, the, the scars of the heart, it's hard to, it's hard to, for them to heal. But know this, that if you do forgive, then your rank will be raised. And on the day of judgment, you'll be smiling and you'll be happy. Because your rank will be so high, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute is to forgive. And when you manifest that attribute, you are manifesting an attribute which is pleasing to Allah and the Prophet sallallahu and that will be a cause for your darajat and your rank to be raised on the day of judgment. And you'll be you'll be taken into higher levels of paradise for your forgiving that person. Inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this gathering. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah allow us to benefit in this month of Sha'ban and may Allah us to be forgiven on the Laylat of Nisfun Sha'ban al Rabbil Alameen. And and inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enter after Laylat al Nisfun Sha'ban to be purified just like we came from the wombs of our mothers. And then to enter Ramadan in such a pure state, we're ready to receive the blessings, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And we, inshallah, we make a niyyah that 
This is another, this is a checkpoint. Layla to Nisbi Sha'ban, Shabbat Barat is a checkpoint. Right? And we, we want to reach that checkpoint where we're forgiven, and then we make a niyyah to leave all the negative things that we do, all the sins that we do, we make a niyyah to. Inshallah, we won't do this again. We make tawbah to Nasuha, and we make sincere tawbah to Allah on this night. And then we move into Ramadan with that state, inshallah, we elevate, 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 inshallah, ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to forgive the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and afiyah for all those who are sick and suffering, ya Rabbil Alameen. All those who are suffering any any tragedy, any dhulm, any oppression, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove them from that oppression. May Allah give them, uh, uh, inshallah, relief from that oppression. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take hold of the oppressors, ya Rabbil Alameen, and replace them with people who are just and fair, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give tawfiq to the leaders of the of this uh, of these countries to uh, give them hidayah to Islam, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And give them hidayah to be just and fair, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And, and, and make the people just and fair, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us people who are just and fair to rule over us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, inshallah, Elevate the darajat and the ranks of those who have passed away from the Ummah of Muhammadiyya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that inshaAllah gives them the, the company of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah to Firdaus, Ya Rabbi Alameen Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala give us all a husn al-Khatima A good ending on the Karima La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam For indeed Allah's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Whoever said, Man qala la ilaha illallah Dakhil al-Jannah Whoever says la ilaha illallah at the end of their life inshaAllah they will enter Jannah Ya Rabbi Alameen So may, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala make our last word in this world لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم